Warren Logan, at the age of 43, has created a multi-million euro hair and beauty business. Working with his mother and sister, Warren's business, Hairspray, has emerged during recession as a successful market leader. For the next eight days, Warren will leave his life in Dublin and will live on the equivalent of social welfare. Under the guise of presenting a documentary on youth issues, Warren will look for people and charities he feels he can help. I've made a connection there and I'm not on the fence about doing some good there. I'm going to do some good there. At the end of his stay, he will part with tens of thousands of euro and reveal himself as the secret millionaire. I'm incredibly driven. Maybe it's a little bit of a dysfunctional driven, but I have to get there. It's unstoppable. What drives me is when I was younger, we didn't have any money. The fear that my mother would be broke, my sister would be broke. I don't want to be broke. At 43, Warren has achieved financial stability and success, but he hasn't always had it so easy, growing up in a difficult and troubled environment. When my family broke up, I looked at it as a train crash. And sometimes in a train crash, you just want to get out and run. It was a broken home that I lived in. And I, even at that age, I felt nearly like, you know, if I was running this myself, I could probably make it better. Now, Warren has a range of businesses, from IT to retail, but his hair and beauty chain, Hairspray, is his main focus. Welcome again to Hairspray's YouTube channel. As you can see, we have something a little bit special for you this morning. It's the Hairspray Extra Long Clip-In Hair Extension. I had Warren when I was 16 years of age. His father was in prison. And when he came out of prison, he was a very, very difficult person to live with at that point, And he was very, very tough on Warren. So Warren had a very difficult childhood. When his father was really hard on him, he dust himself down and go, it's OK, Mom, it's OK, you know? And um, emotionally, he just went in inside himself. That's it. One, two, three. One, two, three. I lived in that terror also, and I turned to alcohol. So he had a double whammy of parents. It shaped his life for his, for his future because it gave him the strength that he needs today so Warren, at a very young age, started to become very self-sufficient. I think he started to make his own money around 10. I want to actually see what the, the reaction is with the customers first. You with know. the synthetic faces? Yeah. Uh, there's a massive part of my life that I've always had difficulty with, and that is in relationships, trusting people. Yeah, tell me about that piece there. That I do like to control things. I sit up in my HQ and I just run operations from there. And I like to be here because if something goes awry, I like to know about it hot selling colours out in the middle of the eye section. Perfect, right, OK, so it's in the eye line. Yeah. He has a gift for, for people and business. He has that. Whatever he touches turns to gold. He thinks differently to most people. He's razor sharp. He sees, he cuts through things immediately. So he has zero fear. He has no fear because of where he grew up. There is no fear anymore. I left school uh, just before my intercert. I was about 14 years of age. I was an angry young lad. There was a lot of divilment out, and we were getting in trouble, and, and there was just nothing else to do. And, you know, thankfully, my granny was there. She gave me the belief t to say, I can do anything I want. We, we had an amazing relationship. She died in that room up there. Uh, and um, it was painful. It was painful at the time. <clears throat> so, as I said, I owe her everything. She's a great woman. Warren will now say goodbye to his friends and family before setting off on his unknown journey. I'm heading down tomorrow. I have to say, I am a little bit nervous. Are you going to miss me? Oh, my God. How are we going to survive? I am very apprehensive because I'm totally out of my comfort zone on this. 
But I just look at it as like everything else. This is a totally new challenge. Get a journal so you can write it. Yeah. And I don't know where he's going, but I know wherever he's going, at the end of it, he's going to find the great results. Best of luck, Very best. Very best. Cheers, My nightmare scenario is looking like a total idiot that people go, who's this pretentious person coming down here, waving a check? Because it's a fine line and we're in difficult times, you know, I have to really just try and be honest because it, it's, it's difficult for people out there at the moment. The day has arrived for Warren to leave his secure life in Dublin. He's saying goodbye to the comforts of home and family. Warren will take the train south to Cork where his journey will begin. For me to go away and be off the radar for eight days was scary stuff. And when I know when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to be very, very nervous about it. But once I'm down there and I'm in the mix, I'll be happy and I, I think I'll feel a sense of relief once I'm just physically there. Warren is heading for a house that will be his home for the next eight days. Away from the hustle and bustle of Cork's busy tourist areas, Warren will have to adapt to living on minimum wage and cooking and cleaning for himself. What are you looking for? Uh, R Riverview House. Riverview House. Yeah, it doesn't ring any bells. No problem at all. Yeah. Okay then. Thanks very much. Do you want me to look it up? No, that's all. I'm uh, not just here. Oh, I have you. Okay, second. great. Give me one minute there. You go up that way, turn there, and then so that row of houses. Yeah, brilliant. I don't know, it has the smell of when I used to go to holiday home when I was a kid. Wow, this is like uh, you have to be. Very vertically challenged to uh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> this is so. My width is nearly the, the size of the shower. <laughs> this is going to be fun in the morning. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> That's a, a great to know that if things don't work out, I can run home very quickly. <laughs> I'll probably do a, a Steve McQueen on the back of that. I brought so many shirts. It's my diary for all my notes. Toothpaste I forgot. Only minutes after arriving in the house, Warren finds an unexpected message from his mother. I'm sorry I cannot speak to you but, uh, to find out how you are getting on. I hope the current journey, you discover an inner strength which finally puts a closure to many things that may have troubled you in the past. But Gran, the whole family wishes you all the very best. I love you very much, Mum Rod, and the rest of the family. Oh, that's just hit a nerve, you know, just, it's just in the ground. <clears throat> It's a lovely letter. You know, me and my sister and my mother, we don't discuss a lot of what happened back then because it was a, bit, it was a, it was a difficult time for all of us. C going over things again can be a, bit, a little bit raw. I couldn't even read it properly uh, because I, I, I'm only down here and I don't want to start choking up already, I'll be honest with you, but I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it right. Tomorrow, I'm looking forward to really hitting the streets and getting a feel of the city and trying to get myself really pointed in the right direction. If I focus, as I said, on the job uh, in hand, I, I, I'll just be honest with myself. I hope I can get this uh, whole thing right, you know? Warren Logan is a successful businessman. He is living undercover in Cork City. After living there for eight days, he will give away thousands of euro and reveal himself as the secret millionaire. 
It's Warren's first day in his new home where under the guise of presenting a documentary about youth issues, he'll be looking to make contact with people or groups he can help. I woke up, I'm well rested and um, I'm looking forward to today now. I just need to find my bearings. Cork is a busy urban centre, welcoming tourists amidst the day-to-day -day clamour of a thriving city. Hoping to find out about the city's different areas, Warren heads to the local barbers to get some insight. I haven't a clue where I am, so as is the best way to find out is really through the local people and uh, then take it from there. Hello. Good morning, how, how are you? Sit down there for yourself. Cheers. Nothing too major today on the hair. Just a bit of a trim. No problem, no problem. How are you keeping? I'm good. Good. I just uh, arrived yesterday, so... Just... Very good. How are you all in the capital? Things are tough, but yeah. I hear... I keep hearing things are getting better. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I haven't seen it. How long are you in Cork? Are you for a few days, I'm or...? Here near, I'm going to be here a week. Are you? Yeah, I'm oh, going to be here a week. You'd be like the secret millionaire, so... I wish, yeah. <laughs> I'm only about 990 grand short. <laughs> 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 well, what, what, what about the dubs this year? Will they win the double? Do you know, you might as well be asking. Ah, the, you know, it's the, on the worst when it comes. Oh, there's, <laughs> there's Paul Trigger there, Ola. How's the music going? Not too bad, That's good. That's, this is the man now. He's, 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 he's going to be our new number one uh, mu music man in, in, in Cockby. And what are you doing, Trigger? What, what do you sing? Hip you're rap? Rap. Are you, and you're local? Yeah, I'm just up the road. I'm growing. Cool. That's lovely. Thank you very Come much. Back, Thank you very much. How are you getting on? Right. So what are you playing there? It's uh, one of my ringtone off one of my videos on YouTube. You wouldn't mind bringing me up, would you? Yeah, why would you want to go up there? I just, I'm just in Dublin and, uh, or come from Dublin and down in Cork, and as I said, I'm. I'm uh, doing a documentary on life in Ireland, especially for youths oh, and everything like that. So I want to. Strong the areas, local areas. Yeah, I, I, because to be honest with you, I'm a Dublin lad. <laughs> I have a clue of the area. So if you, if you, if you have the time, be great. Yeah, no matter. Great. Like other cities, Cork has its difficulties, with its own share of social problems, intergenerational unemployment, drug issues, and crime. Tell me about the video. Yeah, it's just about, basically, it's a bar's eye view on one person that i seen his story kind of unfold over time. And what, was he on drugs and heroin or...? He was on heroin, yeah. Right. And with drug use, was it there or is it something that's come on the scene in the last year it's or two? Kind of lately, it seems to be just... Everywhere. All the time, like, and it's not just heroin, it's like everything. A lot of the stuff that we going on in the place might make the news, you know, like, in Cork before, you would hardly ever hear of gun crimes, you've heard of stabbings and all that kind of thing, yeah. but like within the last even two months there's after being about four shootings and... Have you been in trouble with the police yourself? Never, no. What do you think made that difference? What do you think was in you, should I say, really, that, did, that made you say, I'm actually not going to get involved and I see it? Just, just cop on, like, just having common sense. I also had a, a, a tricky background and I didn't go down your path. I went down the other path. Some people I always find are more... Um, they're made of harder steel, and some people get very, you know, affected with, with things. You know what I mean? The you product, know. your environment, I suppose. Yeah, and it is amazing. Like I always see, if you have brothers and a family, and they're all the same mother, obviously the same father, and they just go down totally different paths. Yeah. You know, it's just it's weird to see. You could have the same as a fellow grows in the mansion. He could be bored because he's got too much money. Yeah. Whereas people around him might not have enough money, so then they get bored and they do other things. Like yeah. That lad, Trigger, I think he'd be probably a rare breed. I think so, a lad like him is an inspiration to a lot of people around here. Because uh, the temptation is just is to maybe rob cars or to go on drugs or whatever, because there's nothing else to do. So he learned his craft down in the hut. I want to get down there and learn a little bit more about that, so, so that's where I'm going to make my way down there today. I want to just learn a little bit more about 
what the centre's about and what it's doing for the community. Is there a rapper's hut here? There is, yeah. Whereabouts? Warren makes his way to the rapper's hut, where Gary McCarthy tutors a group run by Youth Work Ireland for children who come together to write lyrics about their lives. <laughs> So what you're doing here, what do you think that's fulfilling for the kids that are coming here? What type of need? It gets them in doing something productive, something creative, and it gives them an opportunity to, to rap about their lives. And at the end of the day, rap is, uh, is the voice of the street. So basically right. whatever happens from where you're from or what you grew up with or what you live, then basically that's what you're going to rap about. And some people use rap as a way just to, just to let it all out. As Irish people, we're, I think we're naturally born storytellers, we've lots of humour, lots of wit. Um, so I think a lot of that can be brought into rap as well. Can you show me some more of the tracks that you have on here today? Definitely, or what yeah, way that's working so, here? Gonna do greedy rhymes again, Danny? Yeah. yeah? You're gonna do it nice and low. I never ever stop. I learn from my mistakes, shall yeah, I learn from them all? Don't be there for my crime unless you're there for my fall. See, I've seen a lot of people put down by their choices in life, finding it hard to get through each and every night. See, courage isn't the absence of fear, it's taking action, doing what you want despite if you're scared. See, coming to the community centre here and being able to express yourself through rap, what can lads like your age do if they're not rapping? Yes. Drinking, smoking. Well, what would your ambitions be if we were to move the clock forward a couple of years? Uh, so Gary's done. How important of a figure has Gary been to you? Uh, very important. I would be rapping like you want, Gary. I'm absolutely blown away listening to the talent. A lot of these lads are very quiet, but when they're rapping, they're expressing themselves. They're singing about their local communities, you know, and there's a lot of things about drugs and suicide coming through their songs. If I was their age, I'd love to go to a place like this. I've got a really, really great buzz in there this morning, you know, it was brilliant. It was a very powerful experience being able to see kids going into an environment like that and really enjoying it. Coming from my own background, I didn't have those mentors. I, had, I, I needed a, maybe a sort of Gary in my life. Ah, the beans, the famous beans. You wouldn't have a bag or anything like that, would you? I can actually get as well. What's uh, this? Uh, it's for a coffee morning, just in the Montanati Hotel for those bereaved by suicide. Right, OK. The hotel Montanati is just up the road on the right. It's OK. Do you mind if I take that? Yeah, OK, thank you. Hey. Thanks very much. Bye now. The bottom line is, if you have one character in your life, able to grab you, take you under their arm and tell you things are going to be OK. It's, 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 it's paramount in one's life moving forward. Living here, it's definitely, you've plenty of time to think about what's happened, what's going on and reflection. place I'm in, the food I'm eating, it's really back to basics, you know, and a lot of the time when you take away the things that you normally have in your life, it's a great sort of, in a way, sanctuary for me just to focus. With every new challenge, with every person I'm going to meet, I am fearful because I'm not always comfortable in certain environments. So I am, I have to say, a bit fearful of what's going to be ahead of me and am I going to be able to handle it.
The next day, and Warren has phoned ahead to meet Colette and Anthony Wolfe, who run You Are Not Alone, a self-funded voluntary group who offer coffee mornings for those touched by suicide. I have to say, I'm a little bit nervous going in. I don't know what to expect. Colette, who's running the whole group today, has told me there's going to be quite a few people in here. The whole prerogative today for me is just to listen, get some more understanding about suicide and what it means having the support of a group like this. Today we have a special guest for us. We have Warren. Do the way it works, Warren, as it's your first time sitting in. Get the volume, get the drugs. <laughs> well, well, thanks for having me here, everyone. But uh, actually, my good friend says we're the club that nobody wants to join. You know, I mean, it's something that wasn't in Cork, a coffee morning for suicide. It wasn't there for us, and it wasn't, and we just felt that together we get comfort from one another. So, with the coffee mornings, how helpful? I'm putting this out of the group, have they been? I think it really did help me, I wouldn't say deal with it, but kind of like just, it helped me kind of accept it. Accept it, yeah. uh, that it did happen and like, that I'm just, I'm not alone. It's a great feeling to know that, it you is, know? Yeah. Do you know, for me personally, it's normality. Yeah. Each of us know that, you know, that we're on that walk and it's a hard walk and I, you know, I can look across the table or look alongside me, you know, to the people that are there. I like, can, if some, you'll always know if somebody, one of them are having a hard day mm -hmm. and there is hope there. I'm after being so blessed of the people that I'm after meeting since my daughter's death. They don't want nothing from me. They don't look for nothing off me. They like my company and I like their company. The only way you can release yourself of the emotions of su yeah. suicide is to be able to is to be able to express yourself really. It's dreadful for people to lose anyone at any age or you know, no matter what they die from. I can tell you here today, I find it so, so hard. Okay. Yeah. It just rips rips people apart, rips families apart. It it, it just leaves no mercy. So, you know, people think they're in that, I know, at that critical point, like, you know, no one loves them, but they are, they are loved, like, you know. My brother was in the Navy. He was 29 years of age. He was in my idea, um, a year and a half, and um, he was just the life and soul of, of, of the party. He had no troubles, no, he wasn't into drugs or drink or anything. He just, just got depression. And um, people ask yeah, why yeah. or, you know, what happened? We st we're 15 years on nearly and we still don't know why. I heard so many different stories of husbands and daughters and brothers and sisters. And it's just harrowing to see that suicide can just absolutely wrench away someone's happiness and joy that everyone is getting this great inspiration from Colette and Anthony in what they're doing. I want to go a little bit further into it and I've asked, can I go to their house and, you know, get a little bit more about You Are Not Alone and find out what makes them tick. In March 2007, Colette and Anthony Wolfe, who set up You Are Not Alone, lost their daughter Leanne to suicide. She was 18 years old. Can I see some photographs, actually, Leanne? Of all the photographs, this one is my favourite. She turned the camera that way. Mm -hmm. Something beautiful looking. Yeah, uh, she didn't think that now, though. That would be with her with Trina, her sister. That would be when she was in school with her dad. Proud father. Yeah. Yeah. That's her there now, again with her dad. And um, that's her there now as well. Tell me, um, Colette, in relation to, you know, the, the day. The day of, of her day. Yeah. Before Leanne died, we were, uh, we were taking a trip to Leanne's Rashi. She was actually meant to go with us. And a couple of weeks, about two months before, and she changed her mind. We'd just gone into bed. Yeah. And Anthony's phone, Anthony would have had his work phone with him, and the phone rang. But you ever, I must, we must have fell off to sleep. And then he sat up in, in the bed and he said something like, he says, what? But I, I could know by his voice that, you know, something kind of churned in my stomach, you know, I was thinking something's wrong. Sinking feeling, yeah. All I was getting was the gist of the call. He was saying, where has she gone, Ant? Where has she <laughs> gone, my son? And he was saying to him, where has she gone, Anthony? Where? But what uh, my son was saying on the phone, she's gone, Dad, she's gone, Dad. He couldn't say the word like that. She died, like, and 
And I remember he threw the phone down. And Mr. said to me on the phone, she stayed dead. And I, he was crying. He was crying like, you know, I never seen him cry. And he was kind of, you know, ang an angry cry. And I looked at him and he says, Leanne is dead. And I said, See, I'm, I'm a nosy person, and just don't give me Leanna's date. I want to know how she died. She's after taking medication. You know, you worry about him having an accident or drinking too much and getting yeah. sick in their sleep, and, but I never thought of suicide. And he says to me, he says, ma'am, they're after finding a nose. She writes it to Trina, her, her sister. Trina, I remember from my birthday card that you said the words, best sister, you're my only best friend. I always uh, looked up to you. I love you so much. And Anthony, of course, that would be her brother. And then it says, uh, I, I, deep down, we were f best friends, Trina. Uh, things are perfect with you. You have a beautiful son whom I cherished like he was my brother. I want to tell, um, I want you to tell mommy and daddy I would, uh, I would have not chosen a better mom and dad. I'm really sorry. And then she had from the end. On the morning of Leanne's funeral, her sister Trina found some diaries in her bedroom giving a detailed account of five years of bullying. This is Leanne's room. That would be her teddy. Has it changed much? Uh, no. What was her? Her clothes were all over the place and for a girl that was going to end her life, her room was in a state. It was on the day of her funeral, really, that Trina found the, the diaries. They would have been underneath her, her bed. And you'll see the, the day she starts getting more serious, you know, cause a dear diary, you know. Did the handwriting change when it got more yes, serious? Yes, yeah. the handwriting, and she'd go to pencil even at times. You'll see there, you know, a dear diary. Well, the past few days have clearly been the worst for me. She hit me straight in the face and I have a big black eye. I am mortified. I couldn't even hit her back, and I know everybody's laughing at me. I'm going to a disco tonight, and I'm afraid in case she beats me in, fr uh, in front of everyone. I have no real friends. Nobody's going to stand by me. Um, I can't go on with this no more. I can't live with it no more, really can't. It's not fair. What did I ever do to her or any of them for that matter? Can I ask you, what would you say to young girls out there slagging people's weight and they're, and, and they're making comments about their appearance? Think of what you'd say to someone, it can leave a lasting effect. Nothing really prepares you for, you know, uh, a conversation like that. Mm. You see, it's, it saddens me that a woman has to look at someone's notes and her daughter's notes, sorry. <coughs> you know, I saw some of those notes today and it's just horrific. It was a horrific thing to say. You know, I, I personally wouldn't have had the strength. I made a connection there and I'm not on the fence about doing some good there. I'm going to do some good there with, with uh, You're Not Alone because I couldn't walk away. As soon as Colette was three minutes in, I was there and I got it. But I think it can be brought up to another level and I, I hope they'd be receptive to it.
I didn't expect in this journey to be as emotionally involved as I have been. I didn't actually realise it was going to be as hard. I love Colette and Anthony, but I just, uh, that was just a bit, that was overwhelming, you know. And then to wake up the next morning and go and visit someone else, you're sort of preparing yourself to think, I don't know how much more I can deal with this. I'm going to go down to Dungarvan, which is on the coast, and it's going to be nice just being able to just get away a little bit out of Cork City for the day and just do something totally different. Warren is going to meet Ross Barrett, who runs a successful boxing club in Dungarvan. Sorry. Is Ross around? Right there. Warren wants to train and hang out in the gym, as he's heard that Ross is involved in mentoring young people in the area. How are you doing? I'm Warren. How are things? Warren, good to meet you, Warren, yeah? Great gym. Yeah? Thank you very much. Warren learns that as well as the regulars who today are training at the gym, the club is sometimes used as part of a boot camp called Bad Boys Turned Good. Ross takes in wayward teenage boys on a programme designed to get their lives back on track. Ross himself had a tough upbringing. This is what compels him to help young people. So, Ross, how does the programme actually work? Yeah. The lad comes in, what are you expecting from him? What's, what, what's going to happen? Uh, basically, he tells the line. Yeah. You know, he comes in, we have a set of rules, it's ten rules. Right. So you sign up to them, um, and then from there on, it's a zero, zero tolerance boot camp style operation where we have them up at half seven in the morning. There's a structure to the day from early morning to ten o'clock at night. First you clean the house, you come training. So it's a one big house they stay in? Uh, yeah, it's a three bedroom house. Just and normally and do you pay for that? Or yeah, that? I, I fund it. Uh, it comes out of my own pocket. Right. Um, everything we do here is funded from the gym. For okay. Ross invites Warren to see the house where the boys lived during the programme last year. It's very stripped down. Is that purposely yeah. no TV and things like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. No distractions, you know. What's the thinking in that? Uh, so they learn to live within the boundaries, you know, that they, nothing comes for free in life. Okay. And all we're asking them is the, to live within the basic rules. We teach them how to cook, we teach them how to clean, we teach them how to budget, you know. So you're you know, that's the back and trying to just teach the basic principles yeah. of how to live. Yeah, it is. You know, it's these, these guys would have never had that teaching in their own homes, and they never had that teaching in, the, in their lives. Well, once you step through the door, you know, I mean, you, you live by the, 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 the boundaries for every choice they make. There's going to be consequences. You know, if a guy misbehaves once, we'll take something off him. If he might go to his bedroom, take away his mattress. Severe cases that if they really misbehave and they're really stepping outside the boundaries, you know, on a continuous basis, we'll, we'll take away their privacy. So that means removing the door, and then bit by bit you're going to earn that back. Can we see the uh, the, the room? Yeah, stairs? of course you can. This is your room, this is your space. You want to respect it, you know. Yeah. If you don't, again, you know, you're overstepping the mark. You have to give them some reward as well, you know. To, you know yeah, when they get the reward, they feel, oh, I've done something. Do right. you know what? I made a good choice. I've got a reward. And as, as simple as that may seem, you know, it makes sense to them. Actually, by making sensible choices in my life, I have an easier time. Right. You know, I don't have police on my back, I don't have local people on my back. I can actually walk around, you know, and do something with my life, right. you know? Is it expensive? The, the, the whole project uh, yeah, on a yearly basis is it's quite expensive. You know, there's no funding. I've tried applying for funding from local people who do go to, and yeah. you know, sure, in recession, there's nothing there available, but you just plow through. Warren now meets Declan Palmer, who has completed the Bad Boys Turned Good program. It must have been difficult enough. It was hard getting used to it. Declan was estranged from his father after his mother died and slipped into a very dark place where he drank to ease the pain. So tell me about the, the pain and the, the numbness. Well, pretty much, you know, that shows a kind of a story of my pain there. Like, this is my reaction to my emotions, you know, how long, or how long of a space of time did you that? was do that? in about a week. And there was 63 cuts there, I think, you know. To do that in, in such a short space of time, it must have been unbelievable pain. Yeah. Well, honestly, I was in such emotional turmoil. I was trying to search for pain, trying to feel that pain that I was, you know, yearning to actually feel, to know I was still alive, still had a soul, so to speak, you know. And did you? No, didn't feel any pain, and it took me a very long time to know that's not the answer. Yeah. 
Yeah. Every time I look at them now, you know, it's really just reminding me of this pain, and it's there for my, the rest of my life, you know. There'd probably be a handful, if that, of people you trust in this earth, is there? There'd be a very small handful, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's hurt me so much in the past, you know. It sounds like you really trusted Ross as well. When he earned my trust fully was the day that he said, yes, I'll take you in. And that was, then I knew he was a genuine person. Right. Really, it just kind of gave me that motivation to see people for who they are, no? Yeah. That there are genuine people out there. And you should never give up on those people. You know, it's been a vital part of my life and it's shaped me to be who I am today. Back at the gym, and it is busy with people training for a sparring session. Ross invites Warren into the ring to box with one of his regular gym members. The blows have an unintended emotional impact. The ring is a funny place. It brings up new curveballs every second, and you might think you're, you're paddling along lovely, and sometimes you get a belt in the head. When he hit me in a way he hit me, you know, there's a trigger that goes off in my brain. I don't like getting hit. I'm not a bit violent, but if someone is aggressive or hits me, I, I, I just get... It, it can bring it back very, very quickly. I was in a situation that I was been hit when I was younger by somebody that, you know, had no respect for me as a, as a child. It could be for the simplest thing, as not being able to hang your trousers properly. Uh, the, the, the person that was doing it to me um, was was very big and very strong. And when you're only very young and you're very small and you're looking up like someone like that's like a house. I had a nervous disorder um, because I was petrified of doing anything. Luckily for me, that ironed out through the love of my grandmother, you know? Everyone has their own story and everyone's pain is unique to them. I've seen real pain on this journey. Pain in people's faces that I haven't seen in a long time. And that's a great way to stir one's emotions. I have a lot of decisions I need to make. I'm nervous about that. We're coming to sort of the decision time and when I'm, you know, I'm just really trying to grasp what I really need to do best and I hope I make the right decisions. At this point, I just don't know what I want to do. Warren Logan is a successful businessman who has been working undercover in Cork on a secret search for people or groups to help. After a long and busy week, he is trying to make some difficult decisions. Warren wants to go back to the rapper's hut in Grona Broher Community Centre to find out more about Gary McCarthy, who runs the rap programme. First, he meets Youth Work Ireland director Eleanor O'Sullivan to talk about the programme's funding. The kids that are coming here, what do you think brings them here? The music is, is a great attraction to them, and this is, gives them the opportunity to express themselves. And something like this, like this all costs money, or what way is it through grants or from We're local government? funded from the Department of Children and Youth Affairs. Okay. And with our experience, I suppose, since 2011, over a 25% cut in our funding. And so probably more to come, I'd say. More to come, yeah. yeah. And I suppose you could start losing one or two kids yeah. back out onto those temptations yeah. on the yeah. streets, isn't it, really? Good, yeah. Have you tried it yourself? No. <laughs> no, I haven't, Joe, but I've listened to it a lot. It's cold, tired, hungry and desperate, eating scraps off a every day is getting worse. What happened to her dream? She wanted to be a nurse. And if it couldn't get better, she's a baby on the way. A single mother smoking crack because the father ran baby. So obviously, this has taken up a lot of your time doing these groups. <laughs> do you, Gary, get out of it? I enjoy the feeling of helping them actually get it from idea stage to actually on a CD or on a phone. That's what I enjoy. And, and I suppose I enjoy the kind of buzz that they get off it, you know, when people start to like it and their friends start to like it, you know, it gives them that sense of confidence as well and a sense of achievement as well that they're actually putting 
um, finished pieces of music out there. I see exactly what those kids get with Gary, and he's really into his rapping, and they get it, and he gets them, and that's a great way to be. And point to yourself whenever you're mentioning I or we. How simple a bit of listening has been able to harness uh, that energy into a positive light where these kids are able to re express themselves through a mic and actually these lions come out through the mic. Warren's journey is coming to an end. Soon he will give away thousands of euro and reveal his true identity. He wants to meet Colette and Anthony Wolfe, who lost their daughter Leanne to suicide one last time at their home. Hello, Colette. to see you again. <laughs> Are we getting on? Warren wants to find out where they got the strength to set up You Are Not Alone, a support group offering coffee mornings for those touched by suicide. He particularly wants to hear what their plans are for the future. Leanne loves love. She just loved the uh, horse jumping. The uh, had a love for like you know. So we we kept we kept encouraging her to keep going at us like you know. From that really sort of dark place, what do you think was was what got you into the light? At the start, as I said, I couldn't see no light out like. So it didn't like as if it came like like a magic wand like. And then when, I, when you eventually give over, look, I can't do this on my own, like, yeah. you know what I mean? So I came, I came to that point, and I said, Lord, Lord I, I cannot do this on my own, you know, there's no, no way I can carry this, like, right. you know what I mean? So I've, the I, weight of it. The weight of it, yeah. but that's, that's what I feel like, where the light start to come in, this joy, this peace that we start to getting. Does it give you strength? It does. The strength comes straight from God because that's where we have it. In relation to, so you are not alone, how are things for you now and, like, what's the future? It's uh, it's kind of been something in my heart that I would love to see in, in every county. It, it's about giving hope to other people as well, you know what I mean, out there, right. like, you know, so... It's a stepping stone from if it's going to help them to cope with it yeah. and, 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 and to ease them, you know, to ease It's pain. lovely, Warren, to walk away from someone knowing mm. that you just even just listened yeah. or, or to know that you gave a phone number, they might be ready to talk. It must be very, very difficult for you, just looking at that. It's hard, like. It's hard when you look back, like. She's beautiful, in it? Do you know how she is in her jammies, a young little girl, you know? It, like, it's not natural. Mm. No, not, not, for, not for, for me, like, not for a child to go before, you know what I mean? Mm. Oh, she's my baby. Mm. What do you say? I tell you, they're an absolute inspiration, the two of us, to everyone. <laughs> I've met everybody and I've been touched greatly by some of the stories and it's been a very emotional journey. And this has been a very therapeutic process for me this week and I think probably one of the most rewarding experiences that I've ever had. When I go home and I have time to really digest everything and when I really take it on board what's happened I know there'll be a tremendous experience out of it. And I need to start taking it down a gear or two and work and bring it up a gear or two in my own personal life. And I really, I also want to come back down here and reconnect all the time. And I need to not leave this journey at the train station. You know, I need to bring it into my life because I was meant to do this in my own world, I really feel, you know? After a sleepless night, Warren has decided how he wants to help the people he has met. He has told them that he wants to film a final goodbye, but in reality, he is about to donate thousands of euro towards their causes. I've had a good bit of time to reflect. It's been a difficult decision, and I think I'm in a good place to make uh, maybe some changes in these people's lives. Warren's first visit takes him back to where he began his journey in Cork eight days ago in Grona Broher. I haven't been entirely honest with you. 
I'm not a TV presenter. Right. We're not making a documentary about youth issues. The programme's called The Secret Millionaire. <laughs> 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 and uh, <laughs> I come down here and I'm blown away with what Gary's doing. And uh, I want to give you something that I think will continue in the excellent work. I think you're a bit of a legend. Yes. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know about this? <laughs> there you go. Jesus. Thanks a million. No problem, man. Keep it real. <laughs> so, uh... I didn't expect this at all. I didn't have a clue. It's, it's fantastic. It's really good. It's, it's going to be a huge help for the coming year and just to develop the project and get more people involved. For someone like Warren to come in like, and actually give a damn about what was actually going on here and see the benefits that it, that it does actually have. And not many people do actually see the benefits of things like rapping and, and music. Well, if I think if only more towns and villages and cities had more garages yeah. and do the work, I think it would be unbelievable, wouldn't it? This money will allow us to actually kind of be able to get in people for more workshops and to continue doing it maybe twice a week instead of once a week or maybe three times a week because that's that's the uh, you know, that's what people want. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Gary, seeing him with the, with the kids, what he's doing, you know, he's particularly impressed me at the centre. The way he's able to connect and give trust to kids, give hope, and let them express themselves. And I hope today my small gesture of goodwill lets him continue on the unbelievable work. Next, Warren makes his way to Dungarvan. So I sort of feel like I'm nearly going in having to propose, and I'm really nervous about going in here. I don't know why, but I, I am. So basically, anyway, we're coming down to say our final goodbyes. Yeah. And Ross, you know, I haven't been entirely honest with you. And that's because, being honest, I don't think you know how actually good you are. Right. But I know, because I was a lad in a bad place. And if I had had someone like you in my life when I was growing up, I think it would have made my journey a lot shorter. Thankfully, I'm in a position to maybe put a little bit of brightness and a future into what you're doing. So, I have something for you. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> I hope it does something good. I know it will. For what? Well done. I'm lost for words, you know. I mean, that's, that's going to go such a long way to, to, to build this program more and more, you know, that we can, you know, reach out there better, you know? I was That's nervous about meeting you because I didn't want you to take me doors off at night. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Like, you surprised, <laughs> shocked, you know, and surprised, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a lovely one. You know, to have something like this handed to you and, and have, have, you know, somebody like Warren come down and say, you know, I believe in your project, I believe that what you're doing is great, you know, it just gives you so much more belief. Thank you very much. Superstar. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Uh, you know, you probably have to come back next week before I'll be able to speak again, you know? There's not many characters I'm ever going to meet in my life that are doing as good a work as he's in there, you know? So it's a special day, and it's what I signed up for, and it's the, it's, it's the reason why I'm here, so I'm really, really touched. Lastly, Warren will reveal his true identity to Colette and Anthony Wolfe. You always wonder, do they have any inclination? Uh, about what's ahead in the conversation we're going to have, but I think in the in the long thrust of things it's going to be irrelevant because this is going to be a magic moment for both of us, and uh, I'm really looking forward to going in there and hopefully making a difference in their lives. Hello, Hello. Anthony, how are you getting on? Good to see you. Good have to you see been? You. Where's the lady herself? I haven't been entirely honest with you. I'm not a TV presenter, and we're not making a program about youth issues. You invited me into home and you told me a story that touched a place in my heart that I didn't even know was there. Is this a wind up? No, it's not a wind up, you know? And I'm in a fortunate situation that I'd like to give you something towards you're not alone. I'm not 
easily shocked. People, people don't shock me, yeah. but the sound kind of blown me away. <laughs> I think, do you know, because this is something that you'd see on the telly. Do you know what I mean? It's like something that kind of way. Oh my God, you're not getting away with just the hunting. <laughs> I give you a cup of coffee, Dad, can't kill me. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I know, I really, I know, I just have to say, just about I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> Oh, oh my oh. God, he pulled the wool off my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't kill me. <laughs> I can't believe that. I can't believe that. I just can't. I can't get my head to hold around it, but I know that, you know, that that money is going to be used for good mm -hmm. and it's going to be used for people that are, you know, in trouble. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I know when I was talking to them, I made the right decision. That's oh, my God. Your family, you know, you know that. I think we're going to remain good friends. If they need my services with other things, I'm there for them. But one of the most magical days I've ever had it was absolutely beautiful, you know, really nice. I'll go home with the appreciate everything just that little bit more because it's not all about are you doing well in business or are you not. There's other values in life and sometimes you do forget that. This is an experience that I'll never ever forget for the rest of my life. It's going to take me a while to digest but, you know, my granny used to say as long as my arse is facing the ground, I'm never ever going to forget this journey. It was an absolute delight. And if you've been affected by issues raised in this episode of The Secret Millionaire, you can find support information on RT Airtel page 700. That's RT Airtel page 700. Next tonight, it's prime time. <laughs>